So the question um, that people are asking nationally, who has more to gain from that game, Dak Prescott in the final year of his contract, he's not under contract next year, or Deshaun Watson? Here's Emmanuel Acho's answer. This from FS1 Speak. I think Deshaun has way more to gain. Way more to gain. I think he has more to gain financially, if we're being honest. If you just play I mean, reasonably well, the Cleveland Browns will re-up you. If you just play reasonably well, the Browns will sit there and say, wait a second, this is the Deshaun that we always thought we always had. And then if you play well, you can change the narrative in our minds of who you currently are as a quarterback. Last two years haven't been good, but the Shady so well alluded to, Deshaun Watson wasn't just good in the league. He led the league in passing He was yards. special. He didn't just lead the league in passing yards. He led the league in yards per attempt, which tells you it wasn't just a high volume of throws. He was chucking the ball to mm. receivers even when D-Hop wasn't out there. But who is Deshaun Watson right here, right now? So not only can Deshaun Watson change the narrative in our minds, which might even be more important than trying to re-up again, but on top of changing the narrative on our minds, the Browns have been yearning to pay Deshaun Watson. They were three years ago. And obviously, if he proves competency, they'll do the same thing again. I think Deshaun has everything to gain. Scott, the, the other thing is that's more of a national narrative than a local narrative, I think. Um, been injured. I'm curious to see what the offense looks like with Ken Dorsey. And, and I know you got little glimpses of it from rookie minicamp. How much they tailor it to Deshaun Watson? Yeah, I think – you know, looking ahead, I don't think one game is going to make the difference in, you know, what kind of contract Watson signs two years from now. You know, I mean, he's under contract through whatever, 26. Um, but I, I do think you know, he has to prove that he has to start to prove that he's back to being or can get back to being the player he was. And he's we've talked about since the day about that since the day he showed up. He just hasn't been on the field, um, whether it's suspension or injury. He hasn't been consistent enough, and I think that starts – the Browns need it to start. He needs it to start week one, right? He needs it to start this year and have consistency and stay on the field um, and be available and all those things. And, you know, Dak Prescott, whether or not he gets a contract extension with the Cowboys, is going to get paid huge money somewhere. So, you know, I don't think it's so much about Dak, but I think Deshaun Watson has a lot to prove, and part of that is the offensive change. Like you mentioned, Ken Dorsey. It's going to be more spread out. We're going to see more three and four receiver sets. Um, and how does that suit Watson's game? And the fact is it should suit his game, and that's something he should be real comfortable with. And do you start to see that right away um, that he fits kind of seamlessly into the new scheme? The other thing is, is that you're, like they're, you're connecting the dots with it. It's Dorsey, which goes to Dable, which goes to Bill O'Brien. That's the system he threw – he went crazy in in Houston. Yeah, there's certainly that connection, right? There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, I I tend to be a little more careful with, okay, you know, that's going to be apples to apples, right? Things change, the league changes, he's changed. Um, but we know that Watson feels more comfortable in a shotgun. We know it feels more comfortable spread out. He said that, I mean, I think he'd been in Berea like two days for the, at the start of the offseason program. He was already talking about the freedom of Ken Dorsey's offense, um, the spread factor of Dorsey's offense. I could see more RPOs. So all that seems to, all that does suit Watson's skill set and his style of play and his preferences. And I think there is a sense of, you know, reminiscence going back to those those days with Houston when he was you know, a top five quarterback in the league. So the, the other thing that, you know, I, I don't know if we're not talking enough about it. Maybe we don't have to talk about it. No quarterback has had the injury he's coming back from. I, that, that concerns me. I, I, it's, I'm, not saying it's, I'm not saying it's impossible, but the fact that nobody's had to do it, you know, <laughs> there's a thing called Tommy John surgery for pitchers because of that. Yeah, it, it's certainly – adds a layer of, I don't know, I don't think confusion's the right word, but a layer of maybe doubt to this whole return. Um, you know, I, I when I think of broken bone, I think, okay, bones heal, right? right. Yep. Now, the problem with the shoulder bone is that there's a lot of other stuff inside there. And Watson, when we talked to him in April, mentioned, you know, the labrum had, there had to be work done to labrum because it connects to the shoulder bone. So um, it, it's not just as simple as a broken leg, like, Zach Zinter, right, the Michigan guard. He had a broken leg. He's fine. 
you know, the Browns weren't worried about that at all. This is more complicated. It's a quarterback. It's a throwing arm. Um, the, obviously, the progress reports have been good on Watson so far. I don't know how much he's going to throw in OTAs. We're out there next week. It's the first time, chance we would get to see him if he, in fact, throws. Um, but, yeah, that adds, that adds a cloud to all of us.